Hi guys, Dali here. Welcome to my channel. If you aren't familiar with Vivian Reese, she is a fellow author tuber who provides amazing writing advice on her channel with a really melodic voice. I love listening to her videos in the background. Her videos are really binge-worthy and actually really informative, so I will link her channel below in the description bar. Go and give her some love because she has fantastic advice. So two years ago, she posted her first video on YouTube and that was about outlining and ever since then, I have been following her. Vivian released her debut novel, The Elysian Prophecy, on the 20th of February, 2018. The book follows brother and sister, Ben and Abby Cole, who are just living a normal life. They're both dealing with different dramas of school and different peer pressures, and they're both very different siblings. But when their father is attacked and laid up in hospital and their mother disappears, they start to find out a few things about their family history that they never thought possible. When Abby is abducted, Ben starts having these really intense visions. Ben holds onto whatever sanity he has left in order to find his mother and sister because where have they gone? Who knows? But Abby, on the other hand, is introduced to this gorgeous place called Elysia. But beauty doesn't make it utopian. It seems like it's a beautiful world, but there's things going on underneath that uh, Abby really didn't want to know. But unfortunately, she's the one that gets to find out. So there's a line at the end of the blurb on Goodreads that says, When darkness is coming, who do you trust? And I feel like this really describes the novel well and describes the feel of the novel very well. So I'm really hesitant to review this book. And now I see why a lot of uh, booktubers get a lot of backlash for what they say about books. And actually I was watching one the other day where she got threatened by the author for putting up not even a negative review, but just saying that I didn't really like the book. And she actually got uh, death threats and threats from all this author's fans and all this crazy stuff went, went down. And so I am very wary to do negative reviews and I don't feel like this is going to be too negative because there were some positives in the Elysian Prophecy. Um, but let's get into it. <laughs> First of all, I want to say that I adore Vivian. She has great advice, she's intelligent, and she researches everything that she talks about on her channel. But I just expected, from what I'd seen on her channel, I did expect more from the book. Some of you may already know that I gave The Elysian Prophecy a two-star rating on Goodreads. This is not to say that the book was terrible. I do regularly review and um, rate books that are two and three stars because not many books really get a four and a five from me. And this book wasn't terrible. I did enjoy a few aspects and I feel like that must be said. This is not going to be a crap on the author or crap on the book review. I did appreciate the book. And have you seen that cover? I mean, it is freaking gorgeous. Well, here goes nothing. Fantasy, especially new age, is saturated by authors that just don't do the genre justice. This is not to say that every single fantasy book has to be like Lord of the Rings. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that they just don't measure up, that they're not quite fantasy or... I don't know how to explain it, but this is not the case with the Elysian Prophecy. The world of Elysia that Vivian had built up was absolutely incredible. You could visualize it and it was beautiful and it was just as amazing as Abby thought it was while she was in the world. And I do want to say that throughout the novel Vivian's voice as an author has just grown stronger and stronger. You can see it by the end of the book Vivian has figured out what her voice is and she is using it very strongly to present her point and her characters and the world in which she has created. The tone was also consistent. Each character had their own different tones that created different moods for the books and they were very brilliantly done and they were consistent like I said so not only for Ben but also Abby. This shows that Vivian can write both female characters and male characters. The characters were well developed as people but they did not develop through the story. They kind of just remained kind of the same or there was one event that changed them and then this sparked a change and then for the rest of the book they stayed within that change 
and didn't grow anymore. They didn't become anything different. And the Elysian Prophecy feels like it was an introduction to the real story, that it was presented as, uh, an, like I said, an introduction, sort of like a, a building to the actual plot. And I feel like it could have been condensed down to novella length and had a much better impact. There were a few grammar mistakes in the Elysian Prophecy, but I feel like even books that have been released um, by professional authors who are traditionally published and have six other books out, they still make mistakes. You know, editors don't catch everything, writers don't catch everything, beta readers don't catch everything. It's no one's fault really when a mistake slips through. And this could be overlooked if the character motivations were as strong as they could have been. It just feels like the plot was there and it was this amazing story and this great plot and then characters were thrown in to make changes to the plot, like their own little subplots. But the plot was its own character, its own identity. So as I said before, Vivian describes her settings really well. That's one thing that I appreciated about this book. They were very realistic, very vivid. I could imagine everything that was going on and I did appreciate the um, storytelling that she used to describe the settings. I always had a sense of location and where the characters were and what was, their, what was in their surroundings, especially their immediate surroundings. Okay, so this is the part that I really dreaded most about this review. And that is the characters. I just, I just wanted more. It was like they were underwhelming. And I know how hard Vivian worked on this book, but I just felt like there was something missing with the characters. Like there was something that disconnected them from the reader. As if Vivian didn't really know the characters and couldn't write them or execute them as well as she should have, should have realistically by her um uh, her YouTube videos especially. I just don't know what fell flat here. Like just what happened? Why didn't the beta readers pick up on this? Why didn't the editors pick up on this? Why did critique partners not pick up on this? Did no one sit there and say to Vivian, "Hey, there's something off about this." I feel like people are too convinced that they have to say good things about books. And especially if they are critiquing someone's work. The only way you're going to get better is if people tell you what you're doing wrong. I have an amazing writing buddy. I don't call her a critique partner. I call her a writing buddy. Because she tells me the important things. Like she said to me, is this character necessary in, my, in the Acre Contessa? And she said, you know, write down a list of things to prove to yourself whether this character is necessary or not. And that character was not necessary at all. She became a secondary character, like a really, really minute secondary character. But this is what this process is for, so that you know what's going on with your book. And did no one want to tell Vivian? But anyway, let's get on to the characters. I found Abby to be really annoying. She didn't have much of a strong plot and it was not really well developed. And I don't believe she was necessary as a point of view. Like Ben could have been the main character and he could have figured out what was going on with her through his visions and through other things that were happening in the plot rather than Abby really have anything to do with the plot at all. Though after her mother went missing, I do really appreciate the way that she changed after that. It was a really, believable change and it was something that showed something in her character more than just I'm Abby, I'm here, I exist in this plot. She really made a huge impact on the plot and it was fantastic. Cora, Abby's best friend, was also a great additive to the story though there isn't like a little stupid insta romance thing that goes on between her and another character which is a spoiler so I won't I won't say anything but this character just loves her for some reason. I don't know why, but prior to that, this character had disliked her, they didn't trust her, and then suddenly, ooh, they have feelings for her. And it just popped up out of nowhere, and it was really frustrating. I wanted to see something more developed there. So it was no secret that Abby had a thing for Jesse, who is Cora's brother, uh, but I did like the way that Vivian had made this clear before the start of the novel, as in she had had, Abby had had a thing for Jesse for a long time before the novel started. This way it didn't feel like an Easter romance, it didn't feel pushy or forced or anything, it was just there, she had a thing for him. But it really irked me 
when something happened in the plot, there are a few different times this happened, something big and major that should have been really climactic, felt boring because Abby didn't care about what had happened. She cared more about looking at Jesse's abs or, or what he'd just said or him making her blush or something, which, you know, would have been cute in a romance, but something huge just happened that has really impacted your plot right now and you don't care. So therefore the reader doesn't care. On a different note though, the mother was really fascinating. Her uh, character and all, all the things involved in it that you don't really get to know much about the mother and it drives me crazy and I so I really have to get book two because I want to know what happens but um, her mum was really fascinating she was a different sort of character and she had a really good impact on those around her the story and basically the events of the entire story and the entire world of Alicia especially despite some of the character flaws I loved Ben I felt like he was a great character, he was so good as a main character and as the major point of view. His story was the one that kept me reading because I really got interested in his character and in what he was going to do and what was happening to him because of these awful visions that he's having and all this darkness surrounding him and these things that he can't control. It was really, really fascinating. But all in all, even though The Elysian Prophecy has its faults, I did enjoy it. To a certain degree, enough to want to read the second book. I feel like Vivian's books will just get better and better because she is a fantastic person and she she knows the, the craft of writing. I feel like if she had stronger beta readers or critique partners or editors that could maybe tell her if something was a bit off, then her stories could become even better. But the more that she develops her writing and her voice, just like with all of us, the better that we're going to be. But if you haven't seen her channel, please click on the link below in the description bar because she is fantastic and provides amazing advice. So that concludes this review. And I, I really don't mean any offense by this and I hope that no one is offended, but um, I just wanted to be honest. But if you have any questions or want me to cover a specific topic, please drop a comment below. If you want to follow my journey on other platforms, see the links in the description bar. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and more. I post videos on Thursdays and tags every other Wednesday, so subscribe and hit that little bell if you want to be notified. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye!